You, you know where he's at. Jesse? It's just bad. You want to <laughs> go? Let's get, yeah, we can, let's get uh, What are you feeling, Phil? <sighs> you good, you good, you good. Nah. It was like, there's someone standing over me. That's for the female. He just, it, there's someone like right up on me. And I was it, to feel it, too. it was like, yeah. like, it, this is insane. Like how tense. <sighs> Jeez. Yeah. Like literally you are so tense right now. All right. You're all right. This is why we just, you're protected. We're done. We're done. Hey, you're protected. You're all right, buddy. You're all right. Twenty years. Twenty years. It's been an insane ride. Um, a lot of things. A lot of adventures. A lot of scares. A lot of ups and downs. But it's it, man. This is it. This is the end of our paranormal ghost adventures. Behind me stands a building that literally is what fueled us for years in the beginning. Um, getting this adventure going. Um, we were so novice, we had no idea what we were doing, what we were chasing. But talking to our teachers, talking to our fellow students, researching everything that we could get our hands on in the library and on the internet, so much of that happened in this place right here. And so it just felt fitting to do this final interview for Haunted Iowa 2, the last Haunted Iowa in, this, in front of this building. But. Over the last decade, since the last Haunted Iowa, the first one, we filmed and went on so many adventures, so many hunts, so many chases, and we just couldn't keep up. We couldn't produce, we could put it all out because there was just so much. Life has changed. We've gotten married, we've had kids. It's time to release, to put a book in, to finish this adventure, to go on to the next story, to go on to the next chase, and just put a, a, a final nail in this coffin. I hope you guys like what we have to show you. It covers so many different different times in our lives, so many different team members that we had, so many, so many things just covered in the last decade. I can't wait to finally show you all of this. You know, it's, it's really crazy. It's been 20 plus years in this paranormal realm. We never expected it to become what it did. We never expected Haunted Iowa to become what it did. And over a decade ago when we were filming that, we were doing the interviews to open up the film and I said, you know, people ask me all the time, how long am I gonna do this? And I never plan on stopping. And it's crazy because you literally can't predict these things. You literally cannot set up for what you don't know. And I think that's all encompassing for the paranormal field. You think you know, and then you get surprised again. And something happens that you've never experienced again and I since stepped away myself from the paranormal in 2013 found my way back to it a few different ways a few different times but it's always been in our DNA it's always been the foundation of CCPI and those roots they started right here while we were attending Pomeroy Palmer High School <laughs> our classmates and our friends would tell us that we were crazy, that we didn't know what we were talking about, that we were chasing after nothing. Teachers the same. They would just say, you know, it's funny. You guys are out messing around in, in dark graveyards for nothing. And here we are still chasing after things in the dark. It might look a little different now, but it's still seeking answers and, and, and seeking after the paranormal. And to be able to come together to wrap this entire paranormal journey, the, the ghost hunting journey for CCPI all these years later, to stand in front of this building, to visit these locations one last time, allows us to reminisce and take a step back into that nostalgia. And it just shows how big of a piece paranormal has been in our lives and how impactful it has been in our lives and the many lives of other people. We've met so many incredible people along this, this journey known as CCPI. 
and we're excited to bring you so much of this journey that's never been seen before because all of these pieces that have been quote unquote missing this entire time have been just as important as the pieces showcased in things like Beyond Existence and Haunted Iowa. And we're really, really excited for you to finally see this, the completion of the paranormal, the ghost hunting journey for CCPI. Hopefully it lives up to every, everybody's expectations and gives you another insight to everything that we've been on as we walk down this trail. And finally, put it to rest and say goodbye and move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, it's, it's just a little bit surreal, honestly. But it's, uh, it's exciting. And I hope you're excited for this as well. Over the past 12 years, there are many investigations documented for the original Haunted Iowa 2 concept, a second attempt, and other lost projects. Some of these investigations had footage completely lost, hours and hours scattered to the wayside, and many other things that needed to be compiled. The first of which date all the way back to 2011, right after wrapping the first film. These are those investigations. What do you think about the mine? I think I'm scared. Really? Really. I think this is how scary movies start. Hey! Dude, this is surreal, man. <laughs> you guys are in a hard place now. Yes, yes, I'm in your house. Yes. Dude. So what do you guys think? Dude. Dude, I'm so pumped for this. I know. Oh, I, seriously, we've been waiting for this for so long. Yeah, I can't wait. And we're coming up here and it's raining. I know. Pouring it's down like, rain. Geez. <laughs> Say that lady who's experienced everything, she quit. Really? Like, yeah. And he doesn't have her con. He can't get a hold of her or anything. Hmm. Yeah. It's a yeah. Like freaked out and quit? I don't or? know. He's just like, yep, she quit. Yeah, when we said First investigators ever there. there. Investigate. Like, you don't often get that opportunity. There's not like gonna be homeless people. Like I want to bring my taser. Seriously, that's yeah. how scary movies I got start. My knives. <laughs> that's how scary movies start. Well, <laughs> she just wants to stun. blame the homeless. Not kill, <laughs> right? Mill into like an animal holding barn and uh, ripped out all the floors. And uh, but now the freaking lady that used to work there, she would mow the lawns and stuff and uh, she started to see this little boy running around on the the property and uh, this little boy would like she would be playing some music while she's mowing and all of a sudden her music would stop and she'd look and all of a sudden this little boy is running away from her uh, lawn mower and then he just disappeared right in front of her face she started seeing little boy's bigger brother walking around then you see, she started seeing her little, his little sister, and it would, this I think is the creepiest. She pulled up one day, and uh, the brother and sister were outside, and she sees the little kid's dad, this big old guy in overalls walking around, but she doesn't see the little boy. And uh, she looks up in the window of the inn, and she sees the little boy standing in the window with a sad look on his face. Her arms just hangs him back into the dark. And the wow. And then. Well, here we are with Johnny Hauser. Yes. Getting ready to uh, go to our undisclosed location. Any thoughts about tonight, Mr. Hauser? Hoping the rain holds off. I don't think it'll go around this. Yeah. That's a good feeling. That'd be nice. Or at least holds off enough to get plenty of outside, like, shots of the. Yeah. The location. <laughs> yeah, we don't want Big Sexy getting all no. rained on. That's Big Sexy right there. But, uh, yeah, we're in a little different part of Iowa. It's more hilly. 
not as flat. It's kind of like the direct opposite of Villisca, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a lot of hills and cliffs and pretty cool stuff. Oh, yeah. So this kind of has a creepy vibe up here anyway. It's because you just really, really can't tell what's around the corner, you know? Yeah. It's, you can only see so far. So I think it'll be good. Oh, yeah, dude. Nobody's touched it. Even better. I know. down the middle of the night and once I get past that hay shed down at the end of the road mm -hmm. this whole bottom it just feels like you walk in to interrupt somebody's conversation and they really? don't want you listening to it that's what it feels like yeah oh yeah dude <laughs> that's yeah. that's exactly Cause like we, we were up there and because uh, our buddy he lives around he lives in Guttenberg he's like you need to see this mail dude like, right. so we came up and checked it out and we're standing there and um it's just like dude like it feels like there's someone behind us it's like a little boy and little girl just like ran up on us. And so he's like, do you mind if we leave? Like, it's kind of weird. And I'm like, okay. So we start walking and all of a sudden I just feel like we're being followed by some guy in overalls. <laughs> and he starts like, I feel like he's like running at us. I'm like, we're not supposed to be here. I'm like, we need to go now. <laughs> yeah, we weren't prepared. <laughs> Cause like we were, you know, our guards were down. Right. And, Cause we're just here sightseeing and all of a sudden we're like, okay, there's something here. <laughs> we'll come back the next day and check it out in the daylight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh... So it was, it was good to hear that other people had had, you know, right. feelings or experiences. This gal that we were talking about, the, she saw the picture and says that's both of them, wasn't it? The boy and the girl? Well, both boys and the girl. So it, the other, the, uh, the oldest boy was over around this bush here. Okay, all right. She described him to me to a T. Well, we were out here raking rock out of the grass one day. I said, I half expect to turn around and see a face looking at me out of the window. And she was, well, I do. And she described all three kids to me. And the next day we were up at our volunteer lunch. And she comes up to me and her eyes are that big around. You know the kids I saw? They're in that picture. And I went and looked at them. By God, those, she had described them right down to every bit of clothing they were wearing. Wow. And that's the clothing <laughs> they had on the pictures? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She was lying to me. She's the best flyer I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when did this so, place all start? You built what that history of it? Oh, 1869 is when the mill was finished. Um, they operated for about 10 years and then it shut down uh, due to floods. But the main reason was cinch bugs. It's a That's bug right. that gets in the, the wheat. Um, it also just has to do with the progression of wheat growing wheat in this country. I mean, it just moved west. I gotcha. And uh, it kind of fizzled out. What did it turn 1902 into? 1902 or somewhere in there is when it became part of a farmstead. Okay. So 
Okay. So that's the kids, they would have been part of the farmstead. Yeah. Uh, the guy in the overalls, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Didn't know where, if it was where like did they, or something. Is, is that where they stayed then? Yeah, that's where they were. That's a okay. 10 room house. It's huge. Wow. Yeah. So as Lish and I were about to go up there, we both heard a hey, or like a man's voice or something. Is that what you heard? I just heard something that I don't want to hear. <laughs> Dude, we, seriously, they've been, all in this area we've been hearing kids giggling, yeah. kids laughing, now you guys hear that. That's awesome. It's already starting and it's, it's light out. It's like 6.30. Yeah. It's light. Next, I was walking up this way. She was wanting to go to the bathroom, and I stopped. I could. I heard like a hair or something, a man's voice like coming from that area. And I looked at Lish, and she just had the <laughs> that, that look, exact uh, look on that, her face. And the per- closest person is like a half a mile down that road. It's all surrounded by woods. Mm-hmm. On this side of that, there's nothing except us. Yeah, it's like the third time she's walked over there. And earlier, like we just, you guys, I think Cole walked over there. And everyone else is kind of wandering off over here. So I walk over to the end, I was going to be like knocking on the door and be like, hey, whoever's here, you know, whatever. She's just like, I just feel really calm right here. I'm like, what? I said, I feel creeped out. Yeah. She's like, I just feel really at home. Yeah, like that place creeps me out more than probably anything standing yeah. over there. Yeah. No, the whole time she's just been standing by the car. Yeah, totally off by herself. And like making her way slowly over yeah, there. Yeah, just slowly walking over. And she'll slowly walk back. She slowly. said she wants to go in there? Yeah, she, yeah, she was just, she's like, I want to go in there really bad. And I said, where? She just goes, I just want to go in there really bad. Yeah, that's... And then, and then on the next minute, I'm really scared. I'm really freaked out. This is going to suck because I'm freaked out. And then she's wandering off by herself. Yeah. I don't know, she's kind of weird. That is, gonna have to definitely keep our eye on her tonight. Yeah. You gonna go in the house, Lish? I want to, can't we? No? Why do you want to go in there so bad? Huh? Why do you want to go in there so bad? I don't know, it's cool, I want to go in that white part. That white thing. The one that looks like it's gonna fall apart? Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't look like it in the dark, but I want to go in that part. Now I feel more relaxed there than I do up there at that that building that doesn't have the door. The building we're allowed to go into. Oh yeah. I don't like that building. Why oh, can't I think of the name? Cab Bridge or something like that. I don't know. I think. See, that's where you feel stuff. calm over there, but I I think that's one of the creepiest parts of this place. <laughs> I mean, I'm jumpy, but I'm always jumpy, like when earlier. Yeah. Yeah. But. I'm always jumpy, but I feel more relaxed over there and safe over there than up there. Yeah. Why Why do you want to go in it? It's cool looking. It's got like 10 bedroom or 10 rooms. You wouldn't even go upstairs in our house at night. <laughs> well, I'm not saying I want to I'm going to walk in there by myself right now because we all know that's not going to happen. I just feel safer there than I do up there. Dang. <laughs> I wonder what they even build it for. Like, what's the point? Like a sun porch?
just off by herself. When we were walking up, she was like, I wonder who built that white part. It's so peaceful. I know. That's all she keeps talking about is the white part. Look, she dude. It's I can't the light from the thing. What? Kind of scared me a little bit. What? The reflection of that light going through that window. I can't see her from the camera, but she's just standing. Yeah. She's just dark. Dude, and she never, like, walks away by herself. At least not that I know of. No, I've never, ever seen that happen. She's just down in complete darkness yeah, by she herself. Just, she just keeps walking. Not a care in the world. And dude, when we Seth and I were going to check out the campground, I said, dude, have you noticed that since we got here, Lish's walking, talking, moving, everything looks like a little kid. Like yeah. I've like just heard the way she's talked and, and just walked around and stuff, she reminds me of a little kid. Uh, wow. I'll have to I haven't really been paying much attention because I've been filming, but... Because, like, there's been a few times where she's said things to me or to us or the way she's, like, talked. And I'm like, she really sounds like a little kid. And I was like, dude, hasn't, hasn't Lish uh, looked like a little kid since we got here? He's like, yeah, dude, I know. Hmm. I, I don't know, dude. Yeah, but... I mean, we're seeing exactly what it is. Complete darkness. And she's just standing... In front of the inn, just staring at the windows. Yeah. And I heard when, what you said when she's like, I wonder who built that white place. And just the way she said it was like, it was like a dream palace. Yeah. Like where she could go play with her dolls or something. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's weird. Yeah, she's starting. Like, in the ride down, she's so scared. She's biting her nails. And yeah. No, she's over there taking pictures of the thing. Yeah, talking about how she has a stomach ache because she's scared and... Yeah. I don't know, dude. And the look, like when we rolled up, the look of horror on her face. And now she's just walking around like it's nobody's... Like it's not a big deal. No, she, dude, she's <laughs> standing right in front of the end snapping pictures. Of the white picture. thing. Yeah. Of the white thing. And to be honest with you, it's just a old white sun porch that, yeah. you know, it's a cool building, but it's a porch, who cares, you yeah. know? Hey, have you taken any pictures of the white porch? Yeah. What do you think it was used for? I don't know. Crazy, right? There's no way. It's too random to be built on there. You think? Oh, I don't know. It's different. It's like a sun porch. I mean, you think about the location. You feel the look out over the trees and whatever, the river. I want to go in there really bad. I'm just trying to think of like, different things you could do in there. Like, like different things you could do. Like if the house is being lived in, you know. Like uh, I know for some reason I just like this image of like the, that being the room, like to have dolls and stuff for a little for a little girl to play in, and or maybe like a toy room. I don't know. I think if there was dolls in there, I'd be really creeped out. <laughs> well. I think more of a sun porch. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just go knock on the door then. See what happens. Seriously, like who takes a picture of a tree? But like a little tree. Yeah. She's acting weird. Like she's like, I just want to go in there so bad. Well.
well. Not exactly how we planned the night to start. Yeah. But a uh, big old rainstorm moved through. Um, so we've been kind of hiding in this building. Had a couple weird things. Uh, Johnny got grabbed and we heard some foot, footsteps. Um, occasional voices. Heard some voices on the parabolic dish. They did a little ghost box down by the said uh, lodge. Or is there a little girl room. here that likes Lish? And immediately a little girl said yes. Um, at some point in time, we got a, a male voice that said Kurt, and a female that said Mary. Um, we were talking outside the inn with the ghost box, and we were talking about leaving or something, and and the voice either said bye or fine when we're leaving almost like he was upset or bothered by the fact that we weren't staying um we heard children on the ghost box we heard in on the ghost box um enter i thought up a question in my mind i said inside my head i said uh, do you want us to stay leave or should i knock and immediately after i thought that to myself it said enter so hearing giggling and laughter and just like real faint and not in your face, but I've heard some face, gunshots yeah. too. I've heard two gunshots tonight, and it didn't sound like normal like today guns. It sounded like muskets. Gert heard the second one. Um, it sounded like like a distant civil war battle or something going on, which is civil war history around these parts. So it, I don't know if it's you know paranormal or just people <laughs> out shooting or what, but. as a hotel for the steamboat passengers on the Des Moines River. It was called the Ashland House and in 1857 it was bought by Mr. Mason and his family and they called it the Phoenix Hotel and then the townspeople just called it the Mason's House so in 1972 it was put on the National Historic Register as the Mason House Inn. And during its history, it, um, during the Civil War, it was a station on the Underground Railroad and it was also a Civil War hospital for Union soldiers. There was uh, skirmishes along the, battle, the border of Missouri and so some of the ghosts that are here were actually Civil War soldiers that died here during that time when it was a hospital. Mostly what we get is uh, footsteps that you can't explain, disembodied voices of people talking, but you're the only people here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys experience a lot of stuff when you're the only one, there's no guests? We do. Yeah. We hear people talking, pe uh, pe someone calls my name, and yeah. I'm the only person here, and I'll hear a joy. And wow. um, we'll hear footsteps when we're in the dining room, because the, the hallway is directly over the middle of the dining room, and we'll hear footsteps running up and down. Now, does that freak you out or is it comforting? We did or? at first because we didn't know what was going on, but now it's just they're just playing, they're just doing yeah. their thing, and we're hearing them do it. So you you uh, you were never told that this this place had paranormal activity. When we bought it, we were told that Mary Mason Clark had died on the third floor in that that front bedroom, and just to use it for storage, and because she didn't like anybody in her room. Is you. Gosh, look at Johnny Hauser. They always say night vision makes people look even sexier. <laughs> and boy, is that proven to be true right now. Okay, 
you, Robbie. Once we all get situated, we'll make a statement. <coughs> I'm going to go get situated. Yep, as am I. What's up, dude? Just saw a shadow. <laughs> on that wall. Really? Went across. <laughs> you just saw a shadow on the wall. I thought it was me, but they're. I, I mean, your shadow's going across the wall, because I can see it on night yeah, vision, right. but. This was. And I just happened to look up and it goes. Did it block it out, like that yeah. light on the wall? Yeah. And it didn't set the thing off either. Which there is a motion detector on there, Johnny, so don't let it freak you out. I know, dude. I'm already freaked out. Okay, this is what they call the Lincoln Room. I'm in here alone. I'm going to lay down and hope that something will make its presence known to me. Hello, my name is Johnny. I'm here to uh, befriend you and talk to you and hopefully experience you and play with you or whatever. Um, my great-grandfather was in the Civil War and I mean you no harm. I just want to uh, talk So far, we're doing introductions just to the spirits, and I'm hearing footsteps all over this room. Now, I'm just laying down in the bed, so, and it's not the mattress at all. Okay, this is almost unbelievable. Like, just laying here, you can hear footsteps like crazy. And everybody else is just laying in their beds. I also felt like touch on my arm. I hope that creaking is not the rocking chair rocking. I can actually hope it is, but... This is really creepy. Sure, probably shouldn't have done this. Get 
getting really cold. It's definitely chill in this room. See if they're real. Can you touch my arm? Are you making that noise? Can you knock like this? Like this again? I'm gonna knock twice, can you knock twice? Is it responding to you? Big time. Holy crap, yeah, I heard that. Pretty sure something was moving my camera to have it like propped up. Just sitting here seeing shadow figures like right in front of my eyes. I feel like somebody's touching my leg. What's up? The ones. Are you recording? Yeah. No way. Yeah, dude. And it wasn't set. Look. The no. alarm's off. Just by the alarm is off. off. Huh. Yeah. Let's check and see. <coughs> 12 a.m. Why would you set an alarm for 12 a.m.? It is now 12.02. And why is it going off if the alarm is off? <laughs> That's awesome. But it turns off when you turn it to on. Hmm. Here, let's... Set it, it for another minute ahead. It's off, right? I said it's on. The alarm's on. Nope, that's two or three. All right now. Where was that? The alarm is on. Yep. Alarm is on. Someone walking. That was. That was. Who's there? Nope. Two solid footsteps. Where are they? They might have been in the same room as us. 
imagine if we'd gone to sleep or someone had fallen asleep in here? That'd be terrifying. Mate, mate. Dude. Hmm. Alright. Let's try it again. And I'll turn it off with the next minute. Now it's off. Set it's at 12 or 5. See? Alarm is off. <coughs> it's off. And then. <coughs> Oh, well, you can't see it on camera, but when you check, it's twelve. It's set for twelve oh five. If it if it goes off at twelve oh five, nope. Not the f. Okay. Twelve oh five. That is pretty insane, dude. Look at alarm is off. You saw it when you came in here. That alarm was going off with it off. You got five witnesses. <laughs> <coughs> Walk in here, that alarm was going off at 12 midnight. The second we got up here, it started going off. Brought us into this room for some reason. We're getting footsteps upstairs. Come down these stairs and help yeah. us out. We heard some footsteps. Yep. So upstairs, and we're just yelling out some things, see if we can get something up. Yeah, we're getting some footsteps. Nurse! Anybody? We need an extra hand. Come on, please help. It hurts. We just brought them from the border. Those, those damn Confederate soldiers got him. It's your last chance. Troops to the border. Our force Keep back those damn Confederates. Anyone that can help? It's up there. You guys moving out there? No, we're stationary. Right. Three footsteps. One, two, pause for more. He's heard stuff in this other room, too. Somebody help? Hello? Whew. Feeling up here is ridiculous. Does it kind of stink up here? Yeah. I yeah. smelled that earlier, but like, I didn't want to say anything like sh Yeah, like it smells like crap. Yeah. Could it be rotting flesh? Like, I smelled it in that room, but I didn't want to say anything. Oh, man, dude. Like, you know, like when you're getting ready to be amputated or whatever, and you get, what, gangrene? Yeah. Doesn't it smell really bad? Yeah. Like, I, I first smelled it in there, I was like, man, somebody stinks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't say nothing. And I've been around everybody all night, and nobody smells like that. It seriously smells like crap up here. Doctor. Are you hiding right now? 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 Did you hear it? Yeah, I, it sounded like a voice to me, but was it stomach noise? It was different. This time. It sounded like no, or something like that. If you're not hiding, I need you to calm down and let us know why, why you won't help us. Anybody want Max? Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Last time I saw you on camera with an axe, that was a bad thing, sir. Five years, eight nights, one last time. The Velisca Axe Murder House would throw one final blow. An uneventful night would be interrupted by what was experienced in these moments caught on camera. Get over here. Let's do this. Something just moved right by me. I heard that. What are you waiting for? You in or out? We're waiting. Take that door open. Then we'll know you're ready. If you're ready to go, kick it open. We'll be able to do this. We'll have the job done in no time. Hey, Seth's coming down to the second floor. You alright, Jesse? Feeling something? Let's go. Dude, I wanted to punch Vegan so bad. Really? Oh my goodness. I have been fighting it for like five minutes. Sorry, you're just standing there. Oh my gosh. And then literally split second, completely gone. Oh man. My hands hurt because my fists were clenched so hard. It's so weird. Why do you want to punch me? The feeling I was getting was because DJ's my partner and you're trying to take it all. That's just how I was feeling. Am I not part of this deal? Why not? If you don't want me in, why don't you come and kick me out? Jesse? Jesse? Okay. You want me to back up? Jesse? 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 Mm -hmm. What are you feeling? Jesse just had his arm. Oh, he just had his arm cocked back. Yeah, like he was about to punch me. Dude, what's up? Do you need to leave? Mm -hmm. You sure? Mm -hmm. You got control? Mm -hmm. I don't know to stay close to you. <laughs> Feeling it already? No, I'm just cold. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a little nipply out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Who's down here and what's your problem with me? Someone out of you. You could just set up on that ledge.
Are you trying to make Jesse mad at me? What, you think a girl shouldn't have a part in this? That was me messing with the night vision, just for the video purposes. There's like so much pressure in my head right now. That's what I was getting the feeling. <clears throat> like I said, if you don't want me in this, come do something. Not through Jesse. You need somebody to come with you? He was just staring off into this corner. What were you doing to him? And why? What we see is Jesse appearing to be in some sort of trance. What Jesse was seeing is a whole different story. Listen to his first-hand account that he shared on a radio show in 2018. Again, you can't even see your hand in front of your face because it's so pitch black down there. But somehow I was able to, you know, adjust my eyes enough to be able to tell that I was looking into a corner and this massive black snake came out of the wall and it was slithering on the wall and it slithered kind of across it horizontally and then it dropped vertically down towards the ground. And once it hit the ground, it came to my feet and it started to slither around my feet for a while, which then in turn slithered. Uh, at what point, like if a giant black snake comes out of the wall, I leave. Right. I'm done. Right. <clears throat> Where, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you? Because at that point, I mean, I, I the best way I can describe it is you're in such a state of disbelief okay. and, and misunderstanding that you're, you're just entranced by the moment. And the second I saw that, I slowly began to lose control of everything. I couldn't pull myself out of the moment. I couldn't think on my own. I was just transfixed by, there's a giant snake that literally came through a wall and is now slithering itself up my legs. The mystery of Velisca is solved. It was an ana anaconda. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Bingo. Yeah. And... So it's, it's slithering up my legs, it gets to around my knees, and black smoke starts to billow out from the, the ground that my feet are standing on. And the, the snake gets higher, the smoke billows a little bit heavier, and it gets up to roughly about the middle of my torso, and the head of the snake wraps around my right shoulder and comes around my left shoulder, and the, the best description I can give is if anybody has seen the movie The Passion of the Christ, the way Mel Gibson portrays Satan is a very, very pale, white-skinned woman with very masculine features, completely hairless, with a black cloak on. And the closest iteration of that representation is what the snake's head turned into. And that head wrapped around and stared me dead in my face. And I remember distinctly being so terrified by it, but having no control or ability to move out of that moment that all I did was I just turned my head down towards my right shoulder and just clenched my eyes shut because I was so terrified. And I, I started to realize I have no control here and I'm losing every last bit of control I might have. And so I just started praying. And I was like, God, you have to get me out of this situation. I don't know what to do. I'm terrified. Help me. And it was the craziest thing. This little Barney Fife looking red siren that he would <laughs> throw on top of his police car appeared in my mind and it started turning. 
and I heard the classic like fallout shelter alarm going off in my head and it literally snapped me out of it and I ran as fast as I could and my buddy DJ is like, Jesse, what's happening? Where are you going? I said, don't worry about it and don't follow me. And I bust out of that cellar and I ran to the barn outside of the Velisca house and I sat there by myself for about 10 to 15 minutes roughly And for that time that I spent alone in that barn, I literally experienced hell in every ounce of its being. I saw people falling through a sky of fire into pits of fire. I saw flesh melting. I saw muscles falling off of bone. I heard screams and cries that still haunt me to this day. And... Dude, that jacked me up so much. And I just, I sat there like not having any understanding of why this was happening. And Seth came out to the barn. You know, we just, they all decided to take a break. And he noticed the second he walked in that barn that there was something wrong. Well, yeah, there were, I was, the two from the basement came in and I was like, where's Jesse? And he's, they're like, he, something happened. He's out in the barn. So I went out there and he's literally just sitting in a chair in the middle of the hallway with his like pretty much his head in his lap and he's beat red and I like touch him. He's just so hot. And I'm like, dude, what is wrong? He's like, dude, all I see is hell. All I see is hell. All I see is hell. And I literally picked him up and walked out into the street to get off the property and like just said some prayers over him and stuff like that. And it started to cease a little bit. But we just like kept him in the street for a while. You're and thinking about it now, aren't you? Oh yeah. Dude, hey. I mean, I I like I said, I probably should have asked if we can talk about this oh, beforehand. I'm, I'm always open to talking about it. I mean, I think about that day or that night, that occurrence at least once a week and have since 2012. So that's six years. And it that coupled with all the other things that we had experienced, it started to impact relationships with family, with, uh, you know, potential dating relationships. It had a ripple effect and it just got to a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's if, if that's something that is, is able to happen to that severity, I'm so out and I'm so done. 